bit from lab, you remember what? Never let monkeys eat bananas. Eat bananas. And we have neutrophil, <coughs> lymphocyte, monocyte. We had, what was the E? Eosinophil? Yeah. And basophil, right? So when I call the white blood cells to the front, depending on what I'm trying to attack, will vary somewhat which ones are being used. So neutrophils are the most common ones. And remember what neutrophils do? Eat bacteria. They eat bacteria. Phagocytized bacteria. So if there's bacteria breaching through my skin, that's the one I want there. All right? That'd be the most active one. Lymphocytes. Okay, these are actually not part of inflammation. We'll talk about them later tonight. But those ones are not actually part of the inflammatory response. Anyone guess why they're not part of it? They're in the lymph system, which is not part of the skin thing. But neutrophils can be. Monocytes. What do monocytes do? Okay, one lone voice in the wilderness. What was it? They phagocytize because they eat. Invaders, they don't care. They'll eat anything that shows up. Macrophage, big eater, literally. Eosinophils attack parasitic worms. Parasitic worms. And basophils release what? Histamine. Release histamine. Oh, like we learned tonight. Mast cells? Uh, mast cells are stationary basophil, basically. It's a, it's a basophil like cell embedded in tissues, which essentially makes it the same. So if I were doing <coughs> inflammation, neutrophils would be a good choice, monocytes would be a good choice, and if I have some kind of wormy thing, those would be a good choice. But I'm going to call these to the front. I'm going to let them come out of my blood vessels, try to attack what's going on. So thou shalt know what the different white blood cells are responsible for. Make sense? Okay. But that's not the only innate defense we have. That was one of them. Let's keep going on our list. Letter B, another innate defense, is fever. Why do you want a fever? What's it do for defense? It kills, makes it go faster. Makes it go faster. Makes what go faster? The process of vasodilation. No. <laughs> Makes my white blood cells go faster. Increases the temperature so the bacteria can't survive. Yeah. Correct. Which we'll do next. So let's do this one. So why would you want your white blood cells to be faster? I can kill more. I can eat more. Right? Your soldiers on speed. That's the logic here. So if I can get my army faster than your army, I win. It also reduces bacteria speed. So the bacteria slow down and you speed up. And that means my army is faster than your army. Which means I get to win. Right? So fever is one way your body tries to shift the balance of power towards your guys. I'm one of those mean parents that never give my kids things for fevers. Because I know this. Right? I want them to have a fever so they'll kill whatever it is. I'm that parent you hate. Right? All right, let's do C. If I don't, if I need one more thing, it's what we learned last week. I can use my lymph nodes. Remind me how my lymph nodes help me defend? What do they do? They filter, right? Which we learned last week. So inflammation, fever, and lymph nodes are sort of innate, nonspecific. Everyone will do this when you're attacked. So if I breach the barriers, these are the next three things I got. All right. But now let's say something gets through the inflammation, through the fever, through the lymph nodes. What are you going to do after level two? What's level three going to be? Die. Besides die. Hopefully, hopefully number three comes before die. Anyone know what the next level is? Left con three? Very good. Let's do that. The last level of defense that you're going to learn, the last choice you have. Level three. This has three different names. <laughs> oh, good shape. Mm -hmm. 
One of the names people will use is specific immunity. Let's contrast that, shall we? Innate was non-specific. What did that mean? I'll eat anything, right? So this one's specific, which means what? Only attack one thing. So specific means I attack one type of pathogen. We'll learn tonight what that means. So I'm not going to attack everything. I'm going to attack one thing. So that's one name for it. The other name for it is, well, let's, let's do one of them. Let's do this one. <laughs> Sometimes called your adaptive immunity. Can someone tell me what the word adaptive means? Can change, can adjust. So another way to do this is this one can adjust or change based upon what it's doing. Another word based upon that, they call this your learned immunity. Can someone tell me what learned means? <laughs> Just what it means, right? You learn it, okay? Also means you have a memory. So in theory, if you learn something in this class, you'll remember it. All three of these are the same name for level three. I'm either going to attack one thing, which I am. I'm going to adjust what I do, true. I'm going to remember what I did, three. So those are the characteristics of the last level of defense. Okay? So that's your specific adaptive memory community. So that level of defense has two choices. <coughs> there are two ways you can do level three. One of them is called the B cell pathway. Does anyone know the other one? T cell. T cell pathway. So your B cells and T cells are members of this pathway. Now just to bother you, Mr. Saladin hits you with bigger words. He doesn't like B cell. He likes humoral immunity. Okay. In this class with me, you can say B cell all day long. I'm fine with that. But you will read humoral a lot, but that's just another synonym, so I don't care. T cell, cell mediated immunity. In this class, say T cell, but when you go online, cell mediated is what people will quote at you. So again, I don't care if you say B or T or like the big words. Okay? Just realize there's two different synonyms there. Okay? So we're going to learn the rest of the night B's and T's. To understand B's and T's, you have to understand a very, very important concept. It's so important, it's definitely going to be in your quiz next week. Okay? 